The Denver Art Museum Artists in Residency program is is just been a really big thrill for me. Um, I mean, we've had the ability to reach thousands of people in here and with stories that are coming out of native country and, and, and prophecy talk and stuff like that. The thing that excited me most about the collaborative project was, first off, an opportunity to work with Walt and Melanie, of course, uh, both are fantastic people, fantastic artists, and that made the most sense. Uh, it got more exciting as we discussed the possibility of working in action, and uh, which right now seems to be the call of the day. We're in this changing time politically in this country that some people feel that they've been um, losing power or losing voice or losing identity. We're kind of an unhealthy organism on this planet right now and nature has a way to deal with unhealthy organisms. So if we don't become healthy and connected again, then we're gonna feel that. But there's a large rising up and a large awakening, I think, that's happening in the United States, especially uh, amidst the political and social turmoil that's going on right now. So in Lakota, when we say, it literally means something holy is moving. And it's recognizing that spirit within you and connecting with others. So that indigenous knowledge is embedded in Greg, embedded in Melanie, and embedded in myself. And I think it found each, found each other before we've actually physically found each other. There was a really strong uh, sense of respect and um, just, I don't know, like a brother and sisterhood that I was, you know, I was hoping for. You know, you always hope for that. And, um, and then it happened. All three of us work in different mediums. Walt and I work in closely related mediums, but um, working with Melanie in uh, the medium that she does, which is a medium I love, printmaking, and, um, and figuring out how to make that fit together. That might be the biggest challenge, is just trying to see how those things fit together properly and uh, still maintain the integrity of all of our practices while we're doing that. It really kind of opens my eyes up to other ideas and ways of thinking about how I do my approach to the art. So they're like brother and sister to me already and, and it's just so cool to have that that place with them to talk with them to send them a text. We send messages back and forth and uh, one of them will do a drawing or some idea and then send it and then we all kind of respond to it so that's been something that hasn't happened with another collaborative project I've been doing which has been really great. One of the things that um, I wanted to do within the space was to also um, let people know that there's a woman in here and, and to have a, a female presence and, and energy within the space. And what's really nice is both Walt and Greg are very respectful of that and um, always take time to listen and um, hear my voice. The pieces that I'm working on this summer here at the Denver Art Museum are a series of panels and the panels are circular in form in a sense to speak about that whole idea of things coming full circle and also taking into account um, passing of time and how in olden days as Native people we would count time by um, the presence of the moon. I come from a matrilineal society and women play this role that um, I think in other communities it might be overlooked or um, might not be noticed. But it's also about um, my journey with living um, with type 2 diabetes and um, the riverways and pathways that show up in a lot of my drawings are simulating the um, digestive tract and looking at how um, things come in and um, move through my system and I'm always um, taking my blood sugar levels um, in the morning and um, at lunch and dinner and before I go to bed. And So the numbers that show up in the work that I make is reflecting um, those blood sugar counts. Half of the way change is made is through dialogue and discourse. And, uh, and creating avenues with which to facilitate that discourse for people, um, I believe, helps enrich the conversation and, uh, and helps progress things forward.
This painting I'm working on um, is kind of a montage of different things um, that, that is kind of about identity, um, using different images and, and different sets of colors, but using uh, straight lines to sort of divide those things up or to, to, um, to actually segment them. Um, those straight lines, I think, are, are a good symbolism to um, the straight lines that are sort of thrust upon indigenous people. Uh, we see things as uh, being continuing and as sort of always being connecting, which is more like a circle than it is a square, which has straight, you know, straight lines, 90 degree angles. And, um, and to me, this is, you know, the, the segmenting things with these harsh lines is representative of those hard lines that are taken, which, um, which separates that circle and separates the way that things are connected. I paint ravens. I want people to know the blackbirds fly to warn of the coming storm. It's not to create fear, it's to create unity, to gather at the strongholds of your family, your community, and ride the storm out. Because once the storm passes, what do you get? You get renewal, you get rebirth, a cleansing. So just painting ravens has this huge message behind it, and I kind of want to point that out in a lot of ways. But to reach the youth, is to understand where they're coming from. So let's put that raven on a skateboard. And the idea is to, in, in this particular case, was to inspire Lakota kids, Oglala Lakota kids, um, Lakota, Dakota, Nakota kids, to be proud of their culture. Because ultimately, my work is about trying to keep these kids alive. And that means way more. You know, it's, it's so big to be able to inspire them. You know, and I think having this platform here at the Denver Art Museum to do that is just phenomenal work and I mean, opportunity to do that phenomenal work. So I just want to say, Tanka to everybody for letting us do this.